My dear students, welcome to Unit 4, Week 2. That extends from March 3rd till March 7. This week, uh, in this week, you are going to start with Lesson 1. In Lesson 1, we're going to recognize how to summarize texts, and then we're going to apply this information on texts that are going to be given to you uh, during the lesson. The word wall is going to include summarize, main idea, details, passages, texts, and practice. You're going to watch a video about summarizing nonfiction, and then you are going to summarize texts in group, in which group one are going to summarize uh, text A, group B are going to summarize text B, group C are going to summarize text C, and group D are going to summarize text D. You're going to write the summarize either on a Word document or you're going to write it manually, uh, handwritten on a paper given to you by the teacher. You're going to watch a video about summarizing fiction now. The first video was about summarizing nonfiction, but here we're going to summarize fiction. You will have an interactive activity related to that, a further practice, and for the challenging question, you will have an activity that you're going to press on and it's going to take you to a page to do the, um, the challenging questions a self-assessment, and for what to do tomorrow, I would like you to search for the following words, meanings, part of speech, and use them in sentences. The words are ethical, dissent, interject, and discord. For week two, uh, for lesson two, you are going to uh, search for the concept vocabulary meanings, part of speech, and use the words in sentences. These vocabulary words are connected to the lesson from Silent Spring. Then you're going to research about DDT and its dangers. Remember that Unit 4 is about people and the planet. That's why you're going to find all of the text that we are going to take are going to be related to the environment and to people's interaction, to people interaction with the environment. Our word wall is going to include DDT, pesticides, chemical, light, maladies, puzzled, striken, stillness, and deserted. You're going to watch a video about Silent Spring vocabulary, and you will have an interactive activity related to that. That's for the first objective. Then you're going to watch a video about DDT and its dangers. Then in groups, you're going to make an infographic about the effects of DDT. You need to gather pictures, statistics, and information to add to your infographic. Uh, I prepared a link that you can uh, follow. It's going to take you to Canva to start uh, creating your infographic. You will have a further practice related to that. And for the challenging question, how does the use of DDT affect the environment, including its impact on various organisms and ecosystems? And how do these effects differ depending on where and how DDT is used? A self-assessment. And for what to do tomorrow, I would like you to read paragraphs one and two in page uh, 363 and answer the annotate questions on the side of the book on your notebook. Let's go now to lesson three. Um, in this lesson, you are going to read and annotate from Silent Spring text. Our word wall is going to include DDT, pesticides, chemical, blight, maladies, puzzles, strike stillness, and deserted. You're going to watch a video about from Silent Spring text by Rachel Carson. You're going, by the way, to read about this amazing writer and how she became a writer. What are the studies that she conducted to become uh, that kind of person who writes. Um, by the way, this book um, was the cause why the American Federation stopped using DDT. And you would think that writing um, a text that has a lot of information would be boring, but Rachel Carson uh, presents her book in a very um, in a very nice way, using a lot of figurative language and literary devices. You will have an interactive activity related to that. Then you're going to watch a video about uh, Rachel Carson fight for the environment. You will have an interactive activity related to that, further practice for the challenging question. In Silent Spring, Rachel Carson discussed the concept of biotic rights, advocating for the protection of all living organisms and their ecosystems. How has the notion of biotic rights evolved since the publication of the book, and what are the contemporary challenges 
in implementing and upholding these rights in the face of ongoing environmental degradation and climate change. Um, you need to research this question and write an article about it. A self-assessment. And for what to do tomorrow, I would like you to revise everything you took through, um, through a link. Press on next here. Uh, you, it's going to take you to a link where you're going to revise everything you do. For lesson four, we're going to explore uh, the Anglo-Saxon suffix ness. You're going to write your own sentences that correctly uses the word stillness. Uh, you're going to find a word in paragraph three of the excerpt uh, in your book that ends with the suffix next, uh, a nest, and write a sentence that shows your understanding of it. Our word wall is going to include suffix, Anglo-Saxon, condition, being, stillness, and excerpt. You're going to watch a video about the history of language. And here, I would like you to look at Anglo-Saxon, from where did it come and uh, why do we use it? In groups, you're going to search and write pa a paragraph about Anglo-Saxon suffixes. You're going to mention the origin, the meaning of the suffixes, and to what part of speech they are attached to and how they change words. You're going to watch a video about the suffix next in particular because it is what is mentioned in our book. And then you have another interactive activity uh, related to that. You will have a further practice. And uh, for lesson five, you're going to recognize subjunctive verbs and recognize indicative verbs. Our word wall is going to include verb, mood, mood, subjunctive, indicative, desire, condition, request, and demand. You're going to watch a video about verb mood, and you're going to have an interactive activity related to that. You're going to watch another video about subjunct subjunctive verbs, and you will have an activity related to, to Savas, a further practice. And for the challenging question, I would like you to search what are for uh, particular implications of using different verb moods like indicative or subjunctive in every communication and how does understanding these uh, nonces contribute to effective language comprehension and expression. You will have a self-assessment and for what to do tomorrow, I'd like you to revise everything you took. Click on next steps picture to take you to the activity. I can't wait to start this week with you guys. All the love and respect. Peace out.